Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. The United States Air Force has been experimenting with unmanned aircraft for decades now. And the Boeing X-51A Wave Rider is the culmination of those efforts. This experimental scramjet aircraft is capable of reaching speeds of Mach 5, or around 3,300 miles per hour. Scramjet technology refers to air-breathing engines in which combustion occurs at supersonic airflow. Indeed, the Wave Rider gets its name because it actually remains airborne thanks to compression lift produced by its own high-speed shockwaves. Since 2010, only four of these experimental aircraft have been produced. And the Air Force is still considering their applications. The X-51 cannot take off from the ground. Instead, it is designed to be launched from an airborne B-52 Stratofortress. Here, you can see the process of loading the experimental aircraft onto the B-52's left wing. The launching mechanism is very similar to a traditional hardpoint for launching weapons. However, the Wave Rider is 25 feet long and weighs a full 4,000 pounds, making it quite a bit more cumbersome than your average missile. That said, the X-51 resembles a missile much more than an aircraft. Its wings are so small as to be virtually non-existent. Directional control is provided by a series of fins located at the rear of the aircraft. This is mainly to reduce drag and allow the plane to reach hypersonic flight, which is defined as a speed of Mach 5 or faster. At these incredible speeds, heat and pressure make using conventional turbine jet engines highly impractical. Whether the technology ends up on missiles, future aircraft, or both, experts agree that scramjet engines are the key to unlocking the next level of high-speed capabilities. In these early testing planes, the focus is on getting as much data as possible from the aircraft to be incorporated into future versions. Here, you can see test footage of the X-51 as it is deployed from its B-52 transporter. This is from the second Wave Rider test flight, which took place on June 13, 2011, over the Pacific Ocean. These pilots were able to achieve hypersonic flight at speeds just over Mach 5. But the scramjet engine failed to reach full power during the test. After several attempts to activate the engine, the Wave Rider crashed into the ocean as planned. This, combined with an earlier and more successful flight from 2010, only provided researchers and test pilots with more data they could use to enhance the program. Currently, flight times are exceedingly short, lasting just a few minutes at best.
However, this is to be expected, as the X-51 test models are deliberately designed to carry just a few hundred pounds of fuel per test. The focus of these experiments is to get the scramjet engine to ignite at high speeds, then increase acceleration after the rocket booster stage is complete. Since 1955, the Boeing B-52 has been one of the Air Force's go-to testing aircraft. Not only is it large enough and powerful enough to carry a wide range of test vehicles and ordnance, but it can also reach altitudes of up to 50,000 feet when needed. There have been several upgrades to the B-52 in recent years, both of which function in much the same way. The first is known as the Conventional Rotary Launcher, or CRL. The second is the Common Strategy Rotary Launcher, or CSRL. These weapon systems help the aging bomber carry a more versatile set of munitions, making it much more lethal in combat situations. Though testing is still underway, the CRL and CSRL allow the aircraft to hit multiple targets simultaneously. The CSRL is essentially a giant rotary wheel covered with hard points. It is designed to sit inside the B-52's bomb bay, allowing the crew to switch between different weapons quickly. These include smart bombs, conventional bombs, air-to-ground missiles, and more. Estimates say the CRL and CSRL systems can increase the bomber's smart weapon-carrying capabilities by around 67%. One of the most beneficial things about these rotary weapons launchers is that they can be fully loaded with munitions ahead of time. Then installed into the B-52's bomb bay all at once. Traditionally, bombs were loaded horizontally and could only be dropped in groups. With these upgrades, the B-52 can quickly switch between munitions based on the current combat situation. Though speed offers a great advantage in various combat situations, it is far from the only strategy being pursued by the U.S. Air Force. In the early 2000s, Boeing was developing the YAL-1 Airborne Laser Testbed. Though the project has since been canceled, it was an important stepping stone in discovering just how useful aerial laser weaponry could be within various combat scenarios. In the case of the YAL-1, the goal was to act as missile defense by using lasers to destroy tactical ballistic missiles before they could reach their targets. Since then, experts have realized that this job can be more easily done from the ground or the sea.
One such weapon ended up aboard the USS Portland, an amphibious transport dock vessel. This solid-state laser is part of the Technology Maturation Laser Weapon System Demonstrator and was successfully used to bring down an unmanned aerial vehicle in May 2020. Solid-state lasers are unique because they use a solid-gain medium rather than a liquid one. In the form of a weapon, these laser beams can reach for miles. And depending on their level of power, they can disable everything from drones to navigation equipment to, in theory, entire ships. Other examples of laser technology being repurposed into defensive and offensive weapons are the CLAWS, or Compact Laser Weapon System. And the LAWS, its full-sized counterpart. Such weaponry is still being evaluated, but they've already shown that they can not only disable, but in many cases, destroy enemy vehicles depending on the concentration and power of the beam. Until these laser systems are fully realized, the best option for ballistic missile defense will remain another missile. That's where the Terminal High Altitude Area Defense System, or THAAD, comes in. First introduced back in 2008, the THAAD is a fully portable, truck-based system capable of defending against short, medium, and intermediate-range ballistic missiles during both descent and re-entry. The concept is simple, and the THAAD utilizes hit-to-kill technology to collide with incoming missiles. A typical battery requires at least six launcher vehicles, carrying eight missiles each, and two mobile operation centers equipped with powerful AN-TPY-2 ground radar. Here, you can see soldiers from Task Force Talon, the 94th Army Air and Missile Defense Command, working with a THAAD system. You can clearly get a feel for the size of these batteries, which fire missiles more than 10 feet in length from tubes around twice that size. It's important to note that the missiles themselves do not have any explosive warheads. Instead, they use their own kinetic energy to destroy the incoming enemy missile. The soldiers here are doing what's known as a pallet deconfiguration, where various parts of the missile system are taken apart, inspected, and reassembled. Due to the sheer mass and weight of the associated components, soldiers on the ground need to coordinate carefully with heavy lifting machinery. Soldiers from the 69th Air Defense Artillery Brigade conducting an intercept test using the THAAD system. First, a mock missile is dropped from an aircraft and allowed to parachute down toward the Earth. Meanwhile, several THAAD batteries fire their missiles in an attempt to intercept them. Thank you. 
As you can see, the THAAD systems are right on target, colliding with the weapons and destroying them immediately. And since the THAAD missiles themselves are not explosive, a missed intercept does not put anyone in the air or ground at risk. It's all part of the many ways the U.S. military is advancing ever forward in terms of technology and capabilities. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.